Uh, g'day there. Just uh, making a little video to show you uh, a little electric scooter that I brought uh, a long time ago, about 15 years ago I bought this thing before all these uh, electrical things, transport modes were in fashion. Um, I bought this from China, a company called HCF. I was kind of interested in electrical forms of transport, always have been, and I found this on the internet one day and it was quite a cheap little unit, in China that is, and I thought maybe I could go into business selling these things here in Australia. Now, so I thought it was quite cheap to buy, but then uh, freight costs and duty, stamp duty on it, cost a fortune. So I gave up on that idea fairly quickly. The rules have changed a bit now, not quite so bad, but uh, back then oh, it cost me a lot of money. So I gave up the idea. Anyway, it's for its time, it's an extremely well made scooter. It's made out of uh, steel, of course. Uh, a lot of them these days are made out of aluminium. It's got aluminium wheels though, it's got 12 inch wheels, full suspension. There's the front suspension and the rear suspension, little shocks on it. It's driven by a 350 watt motor that sits in there and it's belt driven. Great big cog on the back of it. And uh, doesn't give you much ground clearance below the 12 inch wheels. If you sort of hit something, uh, you know, if the wheel misses something, it can quite often hit on this edge here and damage the rim a little bit because uh, it's not that much smaller than the wheel itself. But that is a guard, the, the belt sits behind it. So at least it doesn't uh, damage the, the belt. But, huh, great little thing. But it runs on, it's a 24 volt one, it runs on two 12 volt lead acid batteries, which gave you a range of not very much, about 10 k's back in those days. A couple of batteries that looked something like this. It's only a six volt one, but uh, I've long disposed of the uh, old ones that fitted in there. I used to use it to running down the shops and going for little joy rides and that when I got it. But didn't use it that much after that, especially when the batteries ran out and you've got to buy new ones and they didn't seem to last all that long either, uh, mainly due to lack of uh, recharging. You know, you'd put it away and if you, if you didn't charge it for three months, you'd find the batteries were dead, which is a bit of pain. So I thought, hey, I pulled it out just recently and thought, oh, I should uh, give this a bit of a go and change it to lithium. You know, that's all the rage these days. So, yeah, so I did. I'll show you how I did it. Yeah. This is the lid, the battery compartment in here. There's the, the box that the batteries sit in. And there are one, two, three, four, five screws that uh, hold it in. And uh, I've already taken them out, but they, they sit in there and uh, they've got an Allen key to undo them, pull them out, all five of them, and the lid comes off. There it is. And this is the battery compartment in here. That's uh, just a little uh, cushion, a foam cushion, looks a bit like a mouse pad. Did I mention this? is a post for a seat. It actually got a nice comfortable seat that goes with this, but I like riding it just standing up. So I've taken that off at the moment. It did come with the seat. Now, just to show you in here, electronics, they don't have controllers. For the lead acids, well in these days anyway, uh, it's a fairly simple motor. It doesn't have uh, pole sensors and things like that. It's got a big ballast to take up some of the shock. It's got a junction box here, and then over here, in here, it's got a overload switch. 
and it's got a reset button on the outside. Uh, so, actually, yeah, that's the reset button, and there's a the main switch is just below the reset button there. Uh, and all you've got on the handlebars is you've got a charge indicator and you've got a little accelerator. Okay, it's not a twist handle, it's a little lever. And that's your uh, accelerator. Okay. Now, these these are the big batteries that used to fit two of them in there. Now this is only, like I said before, it's only a small one, this is a 6 volt one. The two 12 volt ones fitted snugly in there, They're larger than this, quite heavy, quite heavy. So what I've done now is I've got hold of some lithium polymers. There they are there. Now these are 3S, 11.1 volt ones with uh, 8 amp hour capacity. So it's sort of about the same as the uh, lead acids. Lead acids were 9 amp capacity. So now this is about the size of one of the 12 volt batteries, the lead acid batteries. In fact, it's a little bit smaller than the 12 volt batteries, the lead acid batteries were. And so it kind of just sits in here like that you can see tons of room left in it you could fit another set in there but uh, i haven't done that at the moment anyway we've got 11.1 nominal voltage set up with a little cable that i made a series connector cable that gives me 22.2 volts 8 amps and fully charged you got uh, they charge to 12.6 amps each so that's uh, 25.2 volts so amps what am I saying yeah they charge to 12.6 volts each which gives you 25.2 volts total which is about the same as the, the lead acids uh, now I'll stick them in, show you. Now, here we go. Now, one problem with this is that uh, you've got to charge, you've got to be able to charge this, and once it's in there and you put the lid on, uh, what do you do? Well, I'll show you. Anyway, these are the connectors from the scooter. I've made a kind of a, a temporary connection thing here just to see that everything works little blade that fits into the bayonet connector on the scooter as your positive and negative the wires are a bit unwieldy but they do sit in there nicely batteries go like that okay and uh, I do put a little spacer in there to stop the battery from jumping around when you're riding it put this foam cover back on there like so. Put the lid on, put the screws in, and away you go. Now, let's see, it should even work. If I turn it on, it turns on, and there we go. beautifully it's got uh, I don't know if I showed you the the brakes on this thing it's got a set of caliper brakes at the front just like on a, an ordinary bike there they are there uh, rubber pads that slide up against the rim of the wheel the 12 inch wheel and at the back it's got a little drum brake 
Nowadays they've all got uh, disc brakes, a bit more sophisticated, but they work, they stop you in time, doesn't go that fast anyway. So there we go, that is the conversion from lead acid to lithium. Now the only problem with this of course is that, uh, how do you charge this thing? Well, you charge it the same way you charge the lead acids, there's the charging port in there. Now what I've done is I've made up an adapter that I bought one of these uh, three, plum, uh, three pin plugs on eBay. The other end of it has got an Anderson plug and I charge it with a fairly standard lithium battery charger. That fellow plugs, pushes in there, and uh, I power that up and set it at uh, the 3S, sorry, 6S charging, bal um, charging uh, port, charging mode, and away it goes. Now the only thing I can't do is I can't do a balance charge on it, but every now and then I can pull the lid off, pull the lid off, and and charge the batteries up. I better turn this off before I do anything. Charge the batteries up via their balance leads. There. I am going to probably get a board, one of those uh, connecting boards, or just a double adapter there that runs to a 6s. Uh, charging port and uh, and have it sticking outside of the box there so I can uh, I can do a balance charge for the batteries without pulling the lid off so there we go that's an old scooter with 12 inch wheels extremely well made a lead acid scooter converted to lithium without the use of controllers and such and it works very very well Okay, thanks for watching.